Welcome to season two of the Pines and Perspectives podcast hosted by Wellhouse Church. This show understands that there is quite a bit of diversity amongst the body of Christ. So we operate according to the motto that certain things are fixed, like the essentials of faith, and the best beer is served on tap, while everything else is just a matter of perspective. Have a holly jolly Christmas. I don't know what that button just did. Well, you just It's the best time of the year. I don't know if there'll be snow, but have a squirt gun cup of cheer. Hey, it's the Christmas episode, and you're with your boys. Pints and perspective. I love it. I love it. You know how hard it is to come up with something new every time? Oh, I know. That's why you're the talent. Nah. That's why you're the talent. It's the Christmas episode. I know. I know. Fire. We. I, I had this fire line in one of my... Um, fire line. That used to be a charismatic thing. In one of my Advent stories, uh, we celebrate Christmas as Christians because of Christ Jesus. Oh, with the C-H-R-I-S-T uh, fire, three times in a row. Fire line as wow. it was placed in that. You're a poet. Uh, you're a poet. Artistry. Love it. Love it. But, we're but not- <laughs> because of that truth, got to be fire about the Christmas episode. But we're not going to talk about Jesus in this Christmas episode. Oh, sure we will. It's always about Jesus. Well, not if I can help it. Uh, Mary, did you know? Well, literally the existence of what we're going, what I'm going to be talking about is because no, of Jesus. I want to talk about Santa Claus. Yes. And my part of the historical St. Nicholas happens because of Jesus. Mary, did you know that your baby? Bo- okay. Hey, have you ever heard that Christmas song? Sir, I want to buy these shoes. Come on, sing it with me. <laughs> For my mama, please. You don't know this song? No. What's it's it? Christmas Eve and these shoes are just her size. Who's this song by? Uh, could you hurry, sir? Because there's not much time. And then, he, then the song is about his mom. You see, mama, she's been sick for quite a while and... Something uh, these shoes will make her smile. If Mama meets Jesus tonight, never once in my life have I heard that song. I can't believe I just sang that whole song. <laughs> my wife, if she's listening, that song's banned in my house. That was that song KSBJ. It's like on all the Christian stations. Okay, but see, I quit listening even when I was Christian. A new song is that a band? That is, is that a Christian a band? band? I think they did it. Um. Back when I was real Christian and I used to listen to KSBJ, KSBJ. even back then, Thanksgiving Day was the last day of the year. You I don't listened. like Christmas music? Oh, no. Pagan! I'm not a pagan. It's not even about Jesus. <laughs> exactly. See how it came full circle? It's about Santa Claus. What are we drinking today, Cullen? I'm drinking a squirt gun. <laughs> <laughs> real okay. ale brewing. Uh, Texas. Yeah, Texas. Real ale brewing. Um they have an IPA. It's a juicy IPA. It's called Squirt Gun. Juicy. Uh, I, it, it, it makes me feel uncomfortable. Why does it make me feel uncomfortable? Anyways, continue. Uh, unfiltered, unpasteurized. I, Aren't they all? I, I guess. It's, I, it's an IPA. That's it. I don't know. It's a juicy IPA. Well, on the last. Adam has. The and, beer. Yeah, Adam has an honorary beer of this podcast. We've talked about it so many times. I'm really excited about it. My, I like, look, IPAs have their place. The Hopheads, I hear you. I love you. I see you. But my favorite beers are like barley wines, which are basically nothing but malt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last barley wine we yeah. had on this podcast, had zero IBUs. Amazing. Uh, and then Ambers and Browns. Those yep. are my, that's where I go. And so this beer... <laughs> Hold on. So if maybe they didn't see the episode on, a, on an earlier episode, I referenced the fat tire beer and you're like, oh, yeah, I've had it. And then you told a story. Yeah, my story was uh, so. Well, I guess my story has some backstory. Adam was the first Always. person that when I became of age, Adam is five years older than me. Uh, <laughs> Just and, put me out there like that. And Adam helped me start drinking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so. 
Kevin and Missy, I'm uh, so sorry. I apologize. I turned 21 in April. Actually, we spent my birthday weekend together in Abilene, Texas. And Abilene is so Christian lame. that you can't get a drink after 9 p.m. on a Saturday. And so we had to wait until we got all the way back to Houston to get a drink. And we got it at Chili's. <laughs> on, on, somewhere on 290. <laughs> yeah, just off 290. Uh, yeah, anyway, Good so times. Adam and I, uh, well, we were also poor. Yeah. Well, living yeah. for the Lord, living well the Lord. below the poverty line back in those days. Well below. Uh, so anyways, yeah, uh, Adam got me started in my drinking uh, <laughs> journey. Gotta say and, like that. Uh, that happened April 1st, April 2nd, I guess, uh, of uh, yeah. the then, year you graduated. And then, I, I graduated a month later? Yeah. Wild. Crazy. Uh, no, 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 no. That must not. What? No, I think it was. Maybe that's true. Maybe that's true. Maybe that was that last semester. Maybe. I don't remember. Anyways, somewhere no, right I around. I graduated in December. Duh. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. So, anyways, I showed up at Adam's house and. For my graduation. For party. his graduation party in December. Um, and I remember this beer <laughs> because we were, there was a communal cooler. So everybody, You're it, welcome. it was BYOB, but Adam supplied oh. the cooler. <laughs> uh, Did I? <laughs> and so I was going out to get beer and, uh, he was like, grab me one of mine. It's a fat tire, man. That's what I chose for my graduation. That's party. what you chose for your graduate. And so I just always remembered it because I'm like, oh, he chose it for his graduation party. That must be like a really good beer to him. Interesting. Interesting. I do love it. I do love it. I haven't had one in a really long time. So new Belgium, Colorado, fat tire, Amber ale. They've, it's been around forever. Yeah. It's a great beer. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. And Merry Christmas. Jingle oh. bells. Huh. Well, how's how's well? That? No, you got to tell oh, us. Oh well, it the, is a it it is um a fat tire, a fat tire. You know, the the label looks different. Uh, they used to have like a it's a bicycle. I mean, it's there. Anyways, sorry. Uh, it was like an bigger, artistic. Yeah, piece. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's got the one thing I love about fat tire is I get this like really um unique chocolate note on the finish. After every sip, I've always felt like this, every, you know, my whole life drinking this stuff. Um, and I just love that for some reason. It, it like warms my soul uh, and it reminds me just of a winter's night. Uh, if you were going to ask Clayton mm -hmm. what warms his soul, you can't say that that warms your soul without a shot of bourbon with it. Wow, but he's with Fat Tire? Like with oh, fat any tire. beer. Oh, any beer. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Clayton just well, likes to take a Clayton, shot of bourbon. No, Got Clayton it. thinks his sole blanket is a beer and a bourbon. Wow. He will tell you anybody. I respect it, his sole blanket. Yeah, that's his blanket for the soul. Interesting, interesting. A beer, beer and, and a bourbon. bourbon. I like it. Uh, thoughts on your squirt gun? Have you been squirted? Uh, I literally was squirted. As <laughs> it, I opened it. It like carbonation out the head, <laughs> all over the table. Uh, Good boy, boy, wild. It's definitely a juicy IPA. Six percent. Uh, yeah, yeah, six percent. It's definitely a juicy. Uh, it's very lively, very in your face. Feels a little out of place for December. Oh. Um, oh, so I chose this for him because it has a toy gun on it. And I was like, Christmas episode, toy gun feels like a Christmas gift. <laughs> That's how my brain did that. Yeah, it's like a, yeah, it's a squirt gun. Uh, I yeah. If it's seasonal or year round? I don't know. Uh, if it's not year round, real well, it should be. Uh, in the summer, I'd be gunning for this in a six pack, please. Gunning for it. Uh, What's your rating? Uh, I get it because it's a squirt. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so clever. Yeah, I think it's very good. Seven four. I'm giving this a six point five. There you go. I like it. You it's breaking out the decimal point for the Christmas episode. Yeah, I guess so. Once in a while, I appreciate you gotta do the thing. All right, ho ho ho! Let's talk about Santa Claus. Let's do it. So, first of all, how do you do Santa in your house? Well, see, it's a conundrum. Y'all got me messed up on this evangelical life, 
And so I grow we've growing up we did we did the Santa Claus thing in my home. Um but uh I, when I had my first child, I was a religious zealot and I thought Santa Claus was the devil. In fact, I had this whole speech about how if you rearrange the letters in Santa it spells Satan. He enslaves a population to do his bidding late at night, br- breaking and entering into private property. He's a burglar, <laughs> and he's always around kids. Creepy. I was anti-Santa. That's a great argument. He wears red. Yeah, that's a gr- yeah, that's a great argument against Santa, I guess. Yeah. So I think I maybe like kind of traumatized my kid. Or at least robbed her of joy. You know, this is why they have therapists. But um, <laughs> <laughs> therapy for children is, you should do it. Definitely adults. Uh, but, you know, your kids therapy. too. But uh, so she didn't really have a Santa experience. She's 10 now. And so um, she doesn't, Santa's not a thing for her. Never really was. But my son is six and he is like talking about Santa Claus this year. And we've never been like, Santa's not real with him. Um, and even with my daughter, I just explained who the historical Santa Claus is, which you're about to get into, but all that to say Christmas is right around the corner and I don't know if Santa's coming or not. I'm probably just going to ignore it and see what happens. So (laughs) when I got divorced, Mm. I had an opportunity to rethink all of this for my kids. Yeah. 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 I was going to start new traditions. Yeah. And I got, when I got divorced, um, my kids were, you know, when we separated, my kids were what, like five and four? Mm. Yeah, five and four. So, like, they, like, Santa hadn't really yeah. come around yet. Yeah, I mean, they're kind of oblivious for Yeah, and a while. so it was like a prime time for me to rethink it all. Unless you're hyping it up. Right? Like, if you don't hype it up at that age... Right, it's which not a big we did not. Right, right, right. Yeah, no. That's just one more thing to do, bro. Everybody's busy. Man, this elf on a shelf. <laughs> <laughs> shit. No. I'm telling you, man, you got to move that thing every single night for 30 days. <laughs> no. hey, I'm not. Did you know that they cost $50 at the Walmart? $50 for a thing, and it's supposed to look at you? And no. I got I to move it every night. I got to get creative every single night and put it in a different room. I told the babies, no. There will be no elves on shelves. That's a demon. <laughs> <laughs> See, you y'all, sound real passionate. You evangelicals got me messed up. Go ahead. So, when I wanted to rethink it, uh, I just wanted to be honest. Yeah, I, I wanted. Yeah, because I also have a brother, Clayton. Like he will tell you, and I've heard other people say this that like there comes a point where you figure out as a kid, you're told to believe all this magical stuff happens, and. If you're told to believe all this magical stuff happens and then you realize, wait, Santa's not real? My parents are liars. Well, no, it's not that. It's that, wait, Santa's not real? Oh, wait, so the tooth fairy's not real? Oh, wait, so Ooh, the, the Easter bunny's not the real? The big magical bunny doesn't bring me eggs? Yeah, so like, oh, wait, so all this magical, majestic, spiritual stuff that you told me was real is not real. Hmm. Oh, wait, so Jesus is not real. Oh, wait, no, that one is. Hmm. That I would imagine that creates a conundrum for a child. Hmm. Hmm. That is a di- like that is a dissonance that they cannot understand. I wonder at what age. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. That's an interesting perspective. I do. I do agree with you that like the lying thing is problematic. Like you have to convince them that uh, another person comes into your house in the middle of the night to, get, which we're going to talk about why we why that's a tradition. That's what the episode is going to be about. So the way I chose to do it was we celebrate Santa in my house. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I tell my kids now, Santa is just a story, a tradition that we participate in. Yeah. It's not like Santa's not a real character. It's a tradition, a story, a lore. Do they get gifts from Santa? uh, No. Yeah. No, they get lots of gifts from lots of people. Right. Of which Santa represents giving. I paid for that. An elf didn't make it. I don't go well, but I'm not the only person that gets them gifts. Right, of course, of course. Right, so it's like it's just Santa represents a spirit of giving. He's a story that represents a spirit of giving. I like it. So that's how I do it. So we're just let's talk about Saint Nicholas. Okay, yeah. So that's where all this stuff originates from. This is the fun part. 
I got no idea why that guy became the bassist. That's what I'm going to talk about. I can't wait for that. Yeah. I'm going to blow your mind with Santa X. <clears throat> so St. Nicholas, the ancient historic St. Nicholas that this entire character is based off of, is actually someone who lived in the specialty area of my first master's thesis. Oh, look at you. Um, so my first master's degree is in church history, specifically in patristic theology. And that represents the first 500 years of the church. So Jesus is born roughly 4 BC, dies 29 BC. So, or 29 8 BC. Eight, yeah, what? CE, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Current era, 29 CE. Um, and then, so you have zero to 500 is the patristic area of theology. And in 325, the first thing I want to point out about this is Constantine, the emperor of Rome calls together a group of bishops for the council called at Nicaea. Mm -hmm. This was first and foremost, a political agenda because he is the emperor of Rome, and at that time, they were the largest world superpower. And, and yeah. there's this group of the church, which is part of the governing, you know, uh, constituency that he has to govern. And they have a combatant that's gaining a whole lot of ground Ooh, who called Arius. And Arius is promoting Arianism. And Creative Adam, name. let's test your theological history. What was Arius's beef? Okay. What was Arius doing? I know it was a theological problem. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A Trinitarian problem. It was. It was also a theological problem. Well, yes. Uh, yeah. Baseline. Uh, but it was about the Trinity. And he said that the Trinity didn't exist. No. It was specifically about Jesus. That Jesus was not God. Jesus was less than God. Jesus the, was not on the same level with God. He w uh, did he argue that he was created by God? He overemphasized the humanity of Jesus. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yes. He was. So, yeah. Right. 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 He wasn't divine. <coughs> yeah. Uh, well, it's not. Yeah. Yeah, 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 just that it's not that he wasn't divine. It's just that he's not equal with God. Got it. He's less than God. Less than They're God. They're not one in three, you know, what later becomes the foundation of Trinitarian theology. Um, <coughs> and apparently that pissed a lot of people off. Well, enough, but it, it also convinced a lot of people apparently. Hmm. Because here's the deal. If you're a one-off cuckoo that goes around spouting stuff off, they don't make councils to denounce your theology. What if Arius was right? What if Jesus wasn't divine? I don't know. Easy. If everybody's <laughs> divine, Jesus is certainly at the very least divine. Oh, Show yourself. He says, skirt. He's, <laughs> he just, Jesus juked me. It was a Jesus juke. Oh. Uh, so they call this council together and Arius gets an opportunity to present his position and argue against the bishop. It's all the bishops from like all over the kingdom. Or, uh, well, it's not Empire, all the Empire. bishops. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, it's a hand selected group. Gotcha. I can't remember how many there are, but there's a substantial amount. Three twenty five. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's in the year three twenty five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Which, yeah. So it's in the year three twenty five, and Saint mm. Nicholas is one of the bishops among them. Yes. Sitting there, listening to the argument. Continues to listen to Arius argue He's, that Jesus is subpar. And, and St. Nicholas is a bishop from the Asia Minor, minor era, like, right. like modern-day Turkey. Right. See, I know some things. He gets up in the middle of the assembly. Saint, uh, and Saint what Nicholas. I need you to think about this assembly is I need you to think about a couple hundred people in a room wrapped in a circle, like around with like a, like a, like a, like an amphitheater, like an amphitheater with an area in the middle and Arius standing in the middle. St. Nicholas gets up from wherever he's sitting, walks across that middle part right to Arius and slaps the shit out of him. Open face. Her open hand slaps him in the face. <laughs> to the point 
in, in a room full of bishops. Yeah, <laughs> like, in front of the church leadership from across the entire and and the emperor. Saint Nicholas is my spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Saint Nicholas is punished. Yeah, they strip him naked right there in front of. Well, uh, they strip him of his bishop's uh, uh, cloak. Cloak. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> like all of his bishop's garb goes away. <laughs> And they throw him in jail. Right. Because he slapped the dude. <laughs> and as the story's told, Heretic. Jesus and Mary both appear to him. Yeah. Okay. I so, forgot that. Some say in a dream, some say like physically appeared to him. Okay. Um, and he has this really like spiritual rejuvenating moment. Uh. Um, and they come and so when they throw him in jail, they put him in handcuffs and they strip him of his like bishop's garb. He has this, this spiritual experience and they find him the next morning without the handcuffs. Ooh, who do he? Reading the scriptures. <sighs> In his bishop's clothes. Ooh, he put it back on. He got it back somehow, or some. They took it. It's, they, it's, it's like the Doctor Strange cloak. It flew back. Miracle. And so, do you believe they put him back in the assembly? He voted. He signed off on Nicaea. And and Arius and they was a heretic. Instituted his bishopcy back. And Arius was a heretic. <sighs> What a mess. Now, some scholars debate that that's a true story, by the way. There, there, there is, but scholars debate everything. So Scholars debate everything, and there are definitely ancient, ancient documents that tell this story. Slapping people, slapping heretics. Okay, so do you know, uh, I did a lot of, I did a deep dive on Santa, bro. I have no idea how that mm. character do evolved you, into Santa Claus. But real quick, some other miracles ascribed to Nicholas, Bishop of uh, Mira. Is giving, yeah. No, no. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 He has so, a history of giving. So there's a, there's a, there's a, there's these two stories. Sorry, U of H yeah. basketball. Yeah, ESPN. There, uh, you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are these two stories, and they have a similarity, but they're different. And also there's, there's debate. So first miracle story attributed to Nicholas, who at some point in his ministry became, uh, referred to by some in Asia Minor as Nicholas the Miracle Worker. No, 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 wait. Wonder Worker. Nicholas the Wonder Worker. So there's this one story where he uh, threw a bag full of gold, a free bag full of gold, into the open window of a home of a poor father with three daughters because the poor father, uh, like, needed food or whatever i don't know uh and so the only like ho like the only way the girls could make money was to be prostitutes and so nicholas like threw a bunch of gold in the window to save these three girls from being prostitutes now the other story uh is a little bit more miraculous and the story goes that nicholas resurrected three murdered boys who had been chopped up and thrown into pickle brine. And Nicholas came along, found them, and put their bodies, like resurrected them from the dead after they had been pickled murder victims. Three boys in the second story, three girls in the first story. Both true, neither true. Uh, what does murdered victim, victims being pickled have to do with it? How, do, how should we think theologically about this? What a miracle. Pictures or it didn't happen. All right, moving on. <laughs> no, I, I think uh, I think there's probably truth in both. What? Okay. Pickled, see, pickled murdered have, boys. But see, I don't have the miracle problem that people have. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Like, I'm not that kind of deconstructing person. Uh, you believe in miracles. Oh, for sure. Oh, no okay, doubt. Okay. Certainly. Sure. Seen them. Yeah, absolutely. Seen them, he says. Yeah, no doubt. And I would also remind everyone that this is a uniquely Western, specifically American problem. What? Um, Chopped up boys and brine? No, the questioning miracles. Oh, oh yeah, because... Like, there are still people... Because of people like me who are just too empirical well there's still thousands upon thousands of people experiencing miracles 
in second and third world countries every day and reporting them back to us. And they are identifiable. We have firsthand accounts. Really? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Where's that? It's a YouTube channel? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Not videos. Oh. But individuals. Mm -hmm. Specifically, I have individuals whom I trust with my life who can attest to eyewitnessing these. One of them, including my father. What up, Kev? Um, Sorry, I apologize, Mr. Ware. Kevin. Yeah, I do not have a problem with the miracle thing that everybody has a problem with. So for me, I All think, right. especially back then, I think they're probably both true. Um, I think they're also both like the telephone game. Oh, yes. Oral history. <laughs> it always gets expanded and added to. There's this uh, episode of Rick and Morty where Rick and Morty are in a uh, green vat of acid. And anyways, it just reminds me of this story. That was a total aside. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Uh, Cullen, do you know what date on the calendar is the Feast of St. Nicholas Day? I have no idea. Come on, man. Don't you know all your Catholic saint days? Whoa. No. Uh, December 6th. Okay. December 6th is St. Nicholas Day, otherwise known as the Feast of St. Nicholas. You know, every saint in the Catholic has Church a has a feast day. Yeah. Has a feast day, yeah. <clears throat> this is, uh, so St. Nicholas was apparently a big deal in, in Germany and in the Netherlands. And the whole uh, uh, concept of gift giving, like a, a gift giving, it being a gift giving holiday, December 6th, Nicholas Day, uh, started in the 1100s in the Netherlands. Okay. Yeah. Um, He's the patron. So every saint is also a patron saint of something or a matron right. saint of something. Uh, I want to guess what Santa Saint Nicholas is the patron patron saint of. It's going to be something of like gift giving, generosity. No, there's two things he's the patron saint of. One of them is very obvious. The other one makes no sense. <clears throat> yeah, like giving, charitability. Nope. nope. Generosity. Nope. Violence. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Violence? What the hell? He slapped the shit out of here. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I got Come no on. idea. Uh, candy canes and waffles. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's like that's not a thing. No, children. The patron saint of children. Oh, okay. That yeah, makes that makes sense. sense. And uh, the patron saint of sailors, seafarers. I don't know where that one comes from. I could. I. I. I didn't go down that rabbit trail. Um, let's see what else. Uh, it was also in the 1100s where um, this idea of gift giving. Uh, the church. Um, you know, everything was kind of like church centric. Uh, but that you would also put out a shoe or a sock on the front porch to receive a gift in. Uh, in fact, in one small village in the 1100s, the priest had coordinated with the with the parents of the children in the small village, and he had created a list with the parents. And if the parents chose uh, for their child, if the parents said that their child had been good that year, they got an orange. If the parents said that their child had been naughty that year, they got a guess what? Lump of coal in their boot. And then the priest that night on St. Uh, on on December sixth, Saint Nicholas, the feast of Saint Nicholas Day, he put coal in the boots of the bad kids and fruit in the boots of the good kids. Interesting. And now it's a multi-billion-dollar annual industry, brother. We are going to get to the American oh, okay. experience. Okay. So yeah, we're okay. just going to go through time. Okay, you already right. picking up on a Coca-Cola <laughs> company done did it to us. All right, here we go. How did St. Nicholas become Santa Claus? Any guess? You're a linguist. <clears throat> so let's think this through, Mr. I know languages and whatnot. Okay. St. Nicholas to Santa Claus. So um, you're not going to get it. Uh, <laughs> Clearly not. What do you think the shortened version of the name Nicholas is in German? <clears throat> Oh, I have no idea. I've never. You might think that the German. shortened version of Nicholas would be mm. Nick, old Saint Nick, but in fact, apparently in German, it's Klaus. It's Klaus. So Saint Klaus, your boy, shortened his name Saint Klaus, Santa, <coughs> Santa Claus. Claus. Now there's other names for Santa Claus. Can you think of any other names for Santa Claus? There's a ton of them out there. Just you know. Think about some movies, some uh, books, some songs. Well, bowl full of jelly. No, nah, bro, that's <laughs> describing his um, midsection. Uh, Saint Nick, uh, Santa Claus, uh, 
Chris Kringle. Chris Kringle, <laughs> my guy. I'm where does it come about, from? Well, I'm trying to think about Tom Allen or uh, Tim Allen. Yeah, Tim, Tim Allen. Allen. Okay, where does the name Chris Kringle come from? Uh, come on, it's I another. No idea. It's another German situation. It's another German thing. Uh, so, in the German tradition, uh, there uh, the this title of the Chris Kin, the Chris Kindle. I'm not a German speaker, but in Chris Kindle in German means Christ child, um, and then. On uh, in this tradition, the Christ child was the one who actually brought gifts on the feast of Saint Nicholas Day, which was December sixth. Uh, but often, this Christ child, this uh, this Chris Kringle, which actually Americans switched it from Chris Kindle to Chris Kringle because that's what Americans do. We appropriate everything and then just destroy it. Um, so, the worst parasite, Chris Kringle. Um, the, the, so Chris Kringle means the Christ child, and uh, the Christ child was often depicted not as baby Jesus, oh, but as a angel, a female angel with long blonde hair and wings. Chris Kringle, Chris Kindle, becomes Chris Kringle in the Amer- in uh, in America in the Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer movie. Chris oh. Kringle. Okay, I told you I was gonna blow your mind, bro. Yeah, clearly. Yeah, I had no idea. I'm trying to think. Tim Allen has this scene where he's trying to explain who Santa Claus is to somebody. Oh. And he says, uh, Santa Claus, St. Nick, uh, uh-huh. Chris Kringle, uh-huh. Hosho Chijo or something. Oh, I don't, I don't know about uh, that. And then, yeah, he has this like run of like five things, and I can't remember except those three. So there's another one in, uh, in England. Okay. They had a Santa Claus version, but he went by a different name, Father Christmas. Oh, I've so, heard that. Yeah, so Father Christmas didn't actually give gifts. Father Christmas represented, uh, he was more like a Bacchus figure. Revelry, drunkenness, indulgence. Um, and so, so like a Scrooge of Christmas? No, not Scrooge. He was the party animal of Christmas. In fact, uh, the one of the best depictions of Father Christmas is actually in um, A Christmas Carol. Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, who is an English author. Uh, he is the ghost of Christmas present. He's always bearded. Oh. He's always drinking, and he's always gluttonous. He's like a Bacchus-type figure. And he doesn't give any gifts. He just gets hammered. <laughs> party. That's Father Christmas. That's Father Christmas, baby. Taupe. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I will be Father Christmas. No, that's, <laughs> not, that's not true. Yo, the beard, the beard. Just saying, if Revelry. I know my, if I know my part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, all right, let's keep moving. Are we enjoying this? Yeah, hope that people are this enjoying fun. just my like uh, battery of facts on Santa Claus. Well, it's like the it's like the history and development of Santa Claus. It is, which is wild. It's crazy. But this is what happens to traditions over thousands of years. They mix and mingle. I might mind you that the Bible's written over thousands oh, of years. Look at him bringing it back. Bring it back now. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it back. All right, let's talk about Santa Claus in the United States. I've kind of given you a history in England, uh, lots of German traditions, a little bit of Netherlands in there. Um, Let's talk about America. Where do you think the modernized version of Santa Claus first appears? You You mean fat dude with a white belly and a red suit that's riding a sleigh full of reindeers? If that's who you think of, yeah. When do you think that image really gets first debuted in the United States? Because that image is uniquely American. Is that true? Hmm. I'll give you a hint. It happened in the year 1822. Interesting. I was was debating, well... My nerd brain was going a lot of different ways. Next hint. Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. It came from the book. Twas the night before Christmas, which actually, I think the uh, the title is actually a visit from Santa Claus: colon, The night before Christmas, which uh, 
uh, debuted in eight, which was published in 1822. There is debated authorship, um, but this is the closest we get to the Americanized. That just Santa. means they dream that shit up around a drunk table, and <laughs> so, two people tried to put it down and publish it. I actually don't know why it's debated authorship. <laughs> um, again, didn't go that deep on that <laughs> rabbit trail, right? When a, when research becomes fun, and you just start going all different directions. Okay, so what about that story? The night before Christmas, what can you remember from that story that we now? Now think of as uh like just um like canon for santa claus i don't know to be fair my not familiar with the story no i am my grandfather wrote a way better version of this story and it, oh my gosh it may be not appropriate i, I bet it's uh, not <laughs> but um yeah i don't remember much of the story if i'm being honest yeah so um so this is the, fir- I'll just start telling you, this is the first place where we see reindeer that fly. Yeah. On they Don- pitter on the roof, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. On Donner, on Dasher, on Prancer, on Vixen. In fact, we get eight names for eight reindeer in this book. Didn't Was exist that- before. Well, that's because this author apparently invented the entire concept. Ex- well, not the entire concept. Because he gives gifts, and we learned that from the Netherlands. But what is it? What is it? What is that character called in that book? Saint Nicholas. Okay, good question. This is the first time we uh, are told that Santa Claus is an elf. This is the introduction of an elf. Uh, is he an elf, or he, does he have elves? Um, no, no, no. In the book, he's refo- referred he's to an as an old elf. Okay, <clears throat> yeah. Um, he also moves. So, uh, 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 um. When when is Saint Nicholas Day? The feast of Saint Nicholas Day, December sixth. Uh huh. Um, and what is the title of this book? A visit from Santa. Twas the twas the night before Christmas. When is that? December twenty fifth. December twenty fourth is Christmas Eve. Well, the yeah, night before yeah, yeah. Christmas. But you said when is that? So but. this is the first time that Santa Claus shows up on Christmas Eve, as opposed to December sixth. Santa used to come way before Christmas uh, uh, because it was the night before Christmas is the darn title the and when the story takes place. Christmas. Uh, we find out that he's an elf. We see stockings hung on the chimney with care. Um, let's see. What else? What else? What else? Uh, and the it, stocking thing in there? Mm-hmm. The stockings hung with care. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does Santa fill the stocking? He does. Okay. Yep. Yeah. He, we also find out that he has the magical power to fly. Yeah, but what is it? Yeah, the, well, fly the sleigh or fly his person. Oh, he goes up to the chimney. First time we see a whole chimney situation. Well, but too. isn't that the bag? I don't know how they. I, bro, I, there's no physics. Oh no! I'm, okay, no, never mind. <laughs> no, never mind. That's Tim Allen. <laughs> That's definitely <laughs> That's Tim the Allen. Santa Claus the movie. Um, so the majority of uh, uh, let's see. So then in 1860. Okay, so hold on. So that was 1822. When that book is published in the United States. In 1860, there's a famous American artist named Thomas Ness. And he's most famous for, uh, he's the guy who drew um, the uh, I Want You for U.S. Army. What's his name? Uncle Sam. Oh, Uncle Uncle Sam. Sam. Okay. Same artist who draws Uncle Sam. uh, Takes it upon himself to draw a Santa Claus. And just for free, not commissioned? No, no, no. It was for, uh, I think he illustrates a book. Now, I don't know what his motivation was. I don't, I'm not sure why. But in 1860 is where we get this famous American artist creates this famous American uh, uh, picture of Santa Claus. And this is where we see him in red and white. He's smoking a pipe. Oh. Uh, and he has a big white beard. Is he fat? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Interesting. And he's in like a big, like it's red like, and white suit, red, red felt with white fur. And so it's definitely cold outside. He's got the hat with the, the ball. Yep. Interesting. The sleep cap, which is from the 1800s. Oh, you're so right. Which is also in a night before Christmas. You're so right. Um, I, um, my wife in her kerchief and I in my cap. That's right. It, a lot of it comes from an 1822 Laying book. Okay, but then. Right. Yeah, exactly. A long winter's nap. And what to my surprise should hear, uh, but eight tiny reindeer. Anyways. Um, yeah. 
So, Madison Avenue, 1930s. The center of American commercial marketing and ad campaigns. That New York? Yes. Yeah. There's a great show that you can watch called Mad Men. It's it's like it's about Madison Avenue in the 60s. Uh but it's it was like the hub of marketing and advertising campaigns. Madison Avenue begins to latch on to this American concept of Santa Claus and begins to use the depictions in what are what do you think are the three main uh uh ad campaigns they used this Santa Claus for in the 30s and 40s? Hmm. You gotta think old school. Where, where, how, and where did people buy gifts? So we're talking about nineteen thirties and forties. Nineteen thirties, nineteen forties, really through the sixties, we see this. But where did Sears? We, okay, department stores, yeah. department store cutouts and ads. Where else did people buy gifts in those days? You might not remember this. I remember my grandmother. She still purchased gifts this way. The catalog? Yes, the mail order catalog. Yeah. Look at you come through. Uh, and then one other was, and this was the big one. This was the game changer. Can you can you think of it? I gave it a reference earlier in the episode. No. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola you, creates the iconic Santa Claus drinking a Coke picture, which we still oh, see. Oh, which we still see every year. Every year. Every That's year. Right. And they they ran that was an official ad campaign from 1931 to 1965 before they brought it back in most recent years. Um, fast forward, last note on Santa Claus and the evolution of what we think Santa Claus is as Americans. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, the stop motion film that plays on CBS on Christmas Eve every single year. Yep. It debuted in 1964. Have you seen it? It's like little felt creatures. And yeah, it's, yeah, 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 Rudolph the sure. Red-Nosed Reindeer. So uh, do you know why that film was originally made? No idea. Come on, what have I taught you about Santa Claus? That he's entirely made up by for the what, American for consumerism? What, all right, why, why was Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer made? Why was that film made? I don't know. Stop. It was a marketing <laughs> yeah. ad. It was a marketing campaign. Great. Thank you, capitalism in America. Great. Now, have you ever heard the song about Rudolph? Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Yeah. yeah, where do you think that comes from? A marketing campaign. It was a marketing <laughs> campaign because capitalism gets to screw you and gets to screw me and Merry Christmas. Yes, it was a marketing campaign. Uh, and then it was so successful that they decided to make a film called rudolph called rudolph the red-nosed reindeer which was uh, obviously extremely popular stop motion movie uh and guess what major detail about santa claus we get from this film where did it take place this film the north pole the north pole we get a conclusion 1964 oh my gosh that bro i did not know the history of santa like that um, Mind blown. I just we just took you from 325. Yeah. All the way to the 60s. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> 42 minute episode. Have a great Christmas. We love you very much. Drink lots of beer. And I think we're taking a week off. Uh we are, and we will come back in the new year with some changes. So cheers to your Christmas. I'm still gonna be just as handsome, if not more. Merry Christmas. Thanks for listening to the Pints and Perspectives podcast hosted by Wellhouse Church. Be sure to give us a rating and a review if you enjoyed the episode. It's free and it helps us immensely. Also, feel free to check out our other podcasts.